Best estimates are there's over 30,000 hospital visits a year in America due to blade contact injuries on the table saw. People physically come in contact with the blade causing a laceration and or amputation. Fortunately, we live in a time where saw stop is an option and I'm not aware of any time that this machine hasn't prevented an injury when it was supposed to. You can't turn off the safety feature, so obviously if you turn it off and touch the blade, well, that said, is having flesh sensing technology that's going to stop and retract the blade bring about its own set of dangers? There's definitely very vocal groups that say yes, and they bring two very valid concerns that need to be talked about, and that is complacency and kickback. So let's get into it and talk about complacency, kickback, and saw stops, and if they're as really as safe as we think they are. Both of the big issues, I think, come down to complacency. You get lulled into this false sense of security and you're no longer fully cognizant of what you're doing. It kind of gets pigeonholed into this knowledge-based thing where people think, oh, saw stop is totally safe so I can't get hurt here and so I don't have to use proper technique, not realizing that kickback is a totally separate incident that saw stop does not protect you from kickback. So we'll talk about that. The other one is with that sense of complacency, you can get in the habit of using bad technique because you're safe and then go to another saw that isn't saw stop, do unsafe things and then not have that seat belt and airbag to keep you safe and now you have an amputation. Before I go any deeper though, I think there's two points I need to hit really quick. One is I am I'm not, have not been, and never were affiliated with Saw Stop in any way, shape, or form. I haven't talked to them about this video or anything. This is just all my opinion. And second point, a little beyond the scope of this video, but just get ahead of the comments. Uh, I will say my experience as Saw Stop, besides the obvious, the injury mitigation technology, is just as good, if not a better saw than everything else in the market. So there are no other compromises that you get when you buy a Saw Stop. They're solid saws. So with that said, let's start talking about complacency. Now I've had a cabinet or hybrid, so big table saw in my shop for at least 11 years and I've had this one for about 18 months. So it's the first time I had a saw stop. I have gotten more comfortable with my fingers getting closer to the blade than I did on my other saws. But I also have this overhead dust collection, which I highly recommend. One of the reasons table saws are so dangerous is people don't use the blade guards because they normally attach on the back and they're in the way. I'm religious about using this. This is only in the way if I'm ripping pieces and then it's really easy to slide out of the way. My rule is I always keep this close to my work surface because the dust collection works that much better and my fingers never go under here. You might think, wow, that's still really close, Caleb, and it is. And on my other saws, I would normally stay a little bit farther away, but I do let myself get a little bit closer. Now where I don't is anytime I'm cutting something where I need to go into bypass mode, and maybe you're not familiar with bypass mode, basically this works off of electrical engineering uh, magic because your body's conductive, so when you touch it, it knows you touch it because of the uh, electrical stuff. So there's certain conductive materials that if it touches and you're also touching that conductive material, can trigger it. So you can turn off the flesh sensing technology. It's called bypass mode. So you can cut things you normally wouldn't cut. So if I'm ever in bypass mode and I know this thing won't stop when I touch it, I'm more cautious than I was before I had this saw. And that said, where I think this argument goes awry is the idea that um, because it's gonna save you from getting hurt, you're just gonna be careless because there's no cost. The other big complaint about saw stop can be, oh, well, you know, if I don't realize I need to go and bypass, forget to check my material, I'm gonna lose all that money. And that's exactly my point, you know? Personally, I'm rather attached to all my digits and definitely want to keep them. The other thing I'm almost equally attached to is my wallet. Even at a touch that maybe wouldn't have really hurt me, now it's, I just shot a brake cartridge. That's a hundred bucks. I just toasted my blade. This is an $80 blade. I need new drawers, because that's scary. That's 200 bucks. I can't come in here being willy-nilly toasting blades and brakes, because I'm not gonna get hurt. <laughs> That's a really expensive boo-boo. Last fall, I was in another shop for a while and they had actually ordered a saw stop. They just hadn't assembled it yet. So they had a different table saw and I had to use it. And I'd had my saw stop for a year. And the idea is once in your own shop, you get used to the idea of amputation not being a risk you really have to be very concerned about. You might go somewhere else where amputation is a risk and you suffer an amputation just because you know, you're careless now. There definitely is a cost um, to being careless, even on a saw stop, it just might not be as medical. But so when I was at that saw, I almost didn't want to use it. I used to ride motorcycles a lot, right? 
I, I really don't anymore with kids and I still really enjoy motorcycles, but I'm so used to being a cager riding, you know, in, in my truck or SUV that the idea of now not having any of that safety around me, if something goes wrong, I'm like, I still love it, but it's like whew, very aware of the risk. It's very similar going from a saw stop to walking into someone's shop that doesn't have a saw stop and being like, I was hyper vigilant, super aware, the opposite of complacent of the fact that I don't have that insurance policy and I make mistakes. I don't have that machine safety to make up for my lack of perfection. I, I would argue if you're not going to be present and aware when you're in the shop of like what machines you're at anyways, probably shouldn't be in the shop. Personally, I think that myth and danger is kind of debunked. At least for me, it might be different for you. Real quick, if you're the kind of person who likes to like and subscribe and comment or share my videos, thank you so much. That really helps a lot. If you're not, that's cool. Uh, thanks for joining me. I hope you're learning something or inspired or at least entertained. Let's get back to it. I hope this hasn't been jiggling too much. I noticed that when I was down here shaking. I think it's been okay. Should be all right. All right, the saw stop does have the standard kickback mitigation, a riving knife for a long time. The saw I had didn't have a riving knife, so I had to be super conscious of that. So for me, it's not a big risk. How kickback happens is basically you're feeding your piece of wood and for whatever reason, it engages the back of the blade, which because that's coming up, raises the piece of the wood and it catches the top of the blade, which is coming forward and ejects this at high speed physically towards your body. Now, especially if this is rough or jagged, it's not just blunt force trauma, you have the chance at a penetrating trauma. You know, it <coughs> goes into you, which is bad. Nice uh, heavy leather apron can uh, help with that. I've never had a kickback at the table saw hit me. I have had kickback. Normally it stays local or, right, this is just good, good technique. You're never gonna be in line with the blade. And unless you're cutting big stock, you never wanna be between the fence and the blade. So if you're out of the path, if it does happen, you should be okay. Also have a riving knife, that's a big deal. One of the complaints with that is because with the saw stop, you're not supposed to use anti-kickback blades that have a little bump on the back of the tooth because it can interfere with the brake. It doesn't necessarily interfere, but it slows down how fast it can stop the blade. And so I have seen some photos of people who um, were like, hey, I feel like, you know, I didn't lose my finger, but I feel like I got cut worse than I should have. And every time I've seen one of those, it's like, oh, you're using an anti-kickback blade. Should have read in your manual. It says don't use those. Still safe, but oh, you can't use an anti-kickback blade, so kickback risk is higher. Personally, I feel like, Riving knives are far superior to anti-kickback blades. If you have a saw that doesn't have a riving knife, like my old one, then by all means, get an anti-kickback blade. But if you have a saw stop, you have a riving knife. Just use it. Works better than anti-kickback blades. Use good technique, stay out of the way. Now the hidden danger. Brand new beginners may, because if you've been around a shop, you, you know better, being misled into thinking that saw stop is completely safe and you can't be injured at all because kickback is still an injury that can happen. But I think this is a little bit of a misnomer to some degree of viewing like lacerations and amputations and kickbacks as completely separate categories of injuries when really the data shows most lacerations and amputations and hospital visits aren't separate from kickback, they're a result of kickback. So yeah, kickback is really what needs to be addressed. So this doesn't make an injury-free saw. What it does is like, if you have that goof, it minimizes the potential risks and harms on the backside. Basically in my mind, the argument that the injury mitigation technology is mitigated or not worth it or whatever because a risk of kickback still exists. And there's people who might be using table saws that don't understand the risk of table saws that need to be aware of that. It's kind of like saying airbags and seat belts are mitigated and we shouldn't bother with it because there's people on the road who don't know about hydroplaning. It's like when you read your driver safety book, we talk about hydroplaning. If you take a driver's ed course, it's hydroplaning. If you watch a video on risks when driving a car or inclement weather, like hydroplaning comes up. If you talk about table saws, kickback comes up. Read your owner's manual on your saw stop. Talks about kickback. People know, as later I do still feel it was worth it, especially considering more days than not, I, I use the saw. And sometimes I'm not even aware that maybe I'm not in the right mental mind space. And it takes me a few days before I realize, hey, Caleb, you're not really where you need to be running these tools. I like that I do have that extra insurance policy protecting me from from myself if I uh, just have, have a lapse. The real hidden danger we're not talking about that we should is the fact that at least if you're American is without a saw stop and a regular table saw that you use, you know, you're potentially sitting on a golden ticket to get rid of all your credit card debt, your car notes, 
whatever debt you have, maybe even a house note, not your student loans though. Without a saw stop, there is definitely a very real risk of amputation and some serious medical bills and considering that those are the number one cause of bankruptcy in America, you just give away that lottery ticket and you get a saw stop. Amputation, leading to medical bills, leading to bankruptcy is no longer an option to discharge all your other debt. I hope you learned something, were inspired or at least entertained and until next time, make time to make something. but at the same time contradict however um, I think that argument is uh, and I get the point of the whole um,